So let's talk a little bit about what a cataract is and why it happens. So to start at the end, we end up with a cataract, which is a cloudy lens that prevents you from seeing well enough to do the things that you want to do. So that's the end point, but what are the stages before that that lead us to that point? Um, and that all involves this condition called dysfunctional lens syndrome. Uh, syndrome. Now, the same way that we talk about cataracts as being inevitable, uh, and, and just as a quick little parenthetical there, in general, the big buzzwords for eyes are cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration. They all kind of get swirled together into just those are, those are all kind of the same thing for a lot of people, uh, or they're all just in the same category. But the difference uh, between those different things is, besides a lot of pathology and physiology, is that glaucoma, macular degeneration, those are things that the vast majority of the population won't get. Even if they're the most common amongst eye problems, still, for every one person that gets it, there's anywhere between uh, 100 to 50 people that will not get those things. Cataracts are different than that. 100% of the population will get cataracts over a long enough period of time. And that's because of dysfunctional lens syndrome. So, uh, the idea behind dysfunctional lens syndrome is for a long time there wasn't a name for the lens slowly getting crummier over time. It was just kind of that we are aging. Uh, and then eventually some scientists were like, hey, we can actually name the stages of this. And it comes in a couple of stages. The first stage is your lens is really, really clear. And we'll put that as number one. Uh, clear, which has an E before an A. That's an E. Uh, and that is uh, the height of clarity, eighth birthday, the best your lens will ever be. It's got maximum flexibility. And, and if you were to uh, look at a lens from an eight-year-old, uh, it's got the consistency of uh, like jello that has been out of the refrigerator for an hour or two hours. It's very, very, well, jello y. Uh, and that's because the gelatin nature of it, uh, and even with regular jello, is by this protein matrix that just keeps everything. Uh, bound together, but very, very loosely. Um, it's all really, really fresh and new in a kid. And so the lens, let's just draw this for, for ease of description. This is an eyeball from the side. This would be the dome of the cornea on the front. And then the iris here. Your lens inside your eye sits just behind that and it's held in place by this ring of muscle with these little zonules, uh, these little uh, zonules that hold the lens like trampoline springs all the way around. And so, when you're a kid, that ring of muscle that rings all the way around it like a steering wheel is able to flex and easily focus your lens. That's why if a kid shows you something on your phone, they'll hold it really close to your face because they can't imagine not being able to hold something really, really close and being able to see it. That's stage one, and it lasts for a long time. The lens is so good when we were a kid that we get a lot of runway out of that. As a matter of fact, it's not until somewhere between age 42 and 50 for most people that we start to notice stage two. And that doesn't mean that stage two isn't already happening. It's just it gets to the point where we notice it. And stage two is inflexibility. Flexibility. Flexibility. Good. Felt like there were too many syllables. Uh, so inflexibility is the lens slowly getting more and more compact over time. Because this is all living tissue, and so the lens itself continues to grow over time. But it's in your eye, and so as it grows, there's not room for it to get bigger, so instead it gets more and more compact. Technically, it gets slightly bigger if there's another ophthalmologist watching this, uh, but it doesn't get dramatically bigger. The layers that are on the inside get more and more compact. It's very similar to how you start off with a, a sapling. If you were to see a new tree planted, it has to have these little things holding it to the ground in order to give it stability and so that a kid doesn't you know, kick it over to impress his friends. And it's cause that's because the new trunk is really, really bendy and rubbery and very vulnerable. That is because there aren't a lot of layers there yet. 
Fast forward 100 years and that thing is a full grown oak tree and you could crash a, a bus into it and the bus won't make it through it, but the oak tree will hardly even notice. And the difference between those two time periods when it's a new sapling that's easily bendable and a big solid oak is that there's new layers that have been laid down over the years and the layers that are on the inside become more compact and dense and woody over time. That's what's happening to the lens inside our eye. And so inflexibility happens because the lens is getting more compact and stiff and stuck. Now, why does that matter? It matters because this lens is dynamic. If we're looking up close, it has to be nice and rounded. If we're looking off in the distance, it has to flatten. And eventually between age 42 and 50, that lens becomes stiff and stuck. And so that means somewhere in that age range, somebody will either have to buy readers for the first time or bifocals or lift their glasses up to read things because every single person has this inflexibility, but it happens over time. If you were to go back in time and look at an eight-year-old, they can read something right here. And if you were to look at an 18-year-old, a little bit farther out, but no farther. And it just gets farther and farther. As a matter of fact, the reason that we notice this in our 40s is not because uh, just that it's getting worse quicker, which it is, but also because we run out of arm length. We can't hold stuff far enough out anymore. We can see the computer pretty good, but not anything that we have to hold. That's stage two. Stage three of dysfunctional lens syndrome is that the clarity of the lens starts to decrease in a way that we notice. Now that's not to say that it's not decreasing in a way that we don't notice before that, because it is. It's slowly getting worse and worse over time. But when it gets to the point that we can notice it, it's because those layers in the lens have become so compact over time that the light trying to get through the lens to the back of the eye, to the retina back here, where we can see it, it's getting muted. It's getting filtered in a way that's not helpful. If you were to remember back to being eight years old, uh, an eight-year-old can read a comic book with all the lights off and just the bathroom light on down the hallway because every photon that's making it off of that page is making it through their lens to their retina. And then you fast forward that same eight-year-old at age 58 instead has to hold a, a cell phone over a menu to shine the light on it just to be able to see it. And the difference between those two things is not the retina. It's actually all the lens because it's filtering out light that's coming in. That is the final stage of dysfunctional lens syndrome because as that clarity continues to uh, decrease over time, the lens eventually goes to the point where even with pretty good lighting, we can't see the stuff that we need to see anymore. And at that point, we can say we've officially moved on to having a cataract because a cataract is when you can no longer see well enough to do the stuff that you want to do as well as you want to do it. The two main symptoms of a cataract, to let somebody know that they have a cataract at this point, are that driving at night has become more difficult, and that's because light coming into this dense lens is getting scattered as it makes it to the back of the eye, and also difficulty reading things without really, really bright lights. Same idea, it's because this lens has become so dense and cloudy that it's now filtering light out of the, out of the front of the eye towards the back of the eye. And so once you've reached that point, that's how you know cataract surgery might be really, really helpful to you.